watching AYV Television. Good evening, this is Primetime News on EYV Television and Radio. I am Marina Terry. Let's start with tonight's headlines. President Dr. Julius Madabio visits John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum in Boston, USA. <music> Ministry of Finance commences 2022 budget hearing. An APC adopts new constitution. The new constitution gave a good thing the world, world will change the world are men. Now for the full news with Marina Tay. Now, um, Sierra Leone's president, Dr. Julius Madabio, has visited the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum in Boston, dedicated to the memory of America's 35th president and all those who through the art of politics seek a new and better world. The library and museum are part of the presidential library system, which is administered by the Office of Presidential Libraries, or part of the National Archives and Records Administration of the United States. The building holds official presidential documents and correspondence, a world of multimedia exhibits and artifacts and literal gems such as um, some unpublished writings of Anne Hemingway, the famous American novelist, short story writer, journalist and sportsman. The president with his team, among them Chief Minister Jacob Jusufa, Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, Dr. Moina David Senge, and First Lady Madame Fatima Bio, was taken on a tour of the facility by Ian Shepherd, a visit visitor operation manager. First dedicated on the 20th October 1979 to educate and inform people about his legacy, John F. Kennedy was President of the United States of America from 1961 until his assassination near the end of his third year in office on 22nd November 1963. He was the 53rd at election and became the youngest U.S. President. Well, now into a local news, the Ministry of Finance has engaged MDAs and stakeholders for the commencement of finance hearing of 2022 budget process, which focuses on the service delivery for efficient and effective development in the country. Mohamed Baka Kamara has more on the story. The national budget is a document that shows how government raises and distributes public money of the state. It is also means by which government provides services and other needs of the state. Though the national budget is an official document of a nation's priorities and programs. Dennis Vandy is the Minister of Finance. The budget, like the honorable member said, is the only tool through which resources of the nation, or resources of the state, can be distributed equitably to meet the needs of the people of the country at all levels. And therefore, policy and reform agenda we'll be discussing today will shape the preparation of the financial year 2022 budget, which I will later present to Parliament for scrutiny and approval in early November this year to so human capital development program in education, that is the food value education program and health. To so this end, we will discourage submission from MDA to start new projects when ongoing projects are not. Speaking on the commencement of the finance hearing 2022 budget process at the Ministry of Finance, Dr. Mohamed Jule Jalo, Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, speaks on service delivering within MDAs and other stakeholders, especially in the areas of diversifying the economy in the country. The gains we have made, particularly in the social indicators, we are going to lose that. That is very, very important to pay attention to. 
Uh, finally, I just want to touch on something very interesting, that is how do we need to grow through investment. If you look at the history of some African countries that have made huge progress in economic development, that is concrete efforts to be what we would call a free economy. Manufacturing with their neighbors, that is the only way you to be. But in the context where the mining sector has not been very great. So, this is what to encourage ministries that have been several investors to pass track agreements to be able to pass every so that at least we move fast so that we get some there are a lot of interesting ongoing projects there are a lot of interesting ongoing investment opportunities but usually the bottlenecks the, the slow process you know so I want to encourage uh, ministers to fast track well, these are areas where you can have not only additional revenue tax revenue for government but for AYV News, I am Mohamed Baka Kamara, reporting in Freetown. Integrated research into the utilities and urban environment project has engaged students from the engineering department at Furabe College, University of Sierra Leone. The engagement, which was a public lecture series on the sustainable development goals, aims at developing the students' skills for the job market. Sheikh Mohamed Sila has more. This project aims at building strategic partnership and collaboration between United Kingdom institutions and universities in the sub-Saharan Africa to develop research projects tackle industry's most significant challenges towards attaining the Sustainable Development Goals. Professor Kaleb Baru Mansari, Dean for Faculty of Engineering and Architecture, said most often their students have not been doing well in the practical world, but affirms that this project will get them there. We work to find solutions to these problems. For this workshop today, we decided to invite our industry partners to come to Fabric College and talk to the students. And hopefully, these students will let's, let's change the mindset of the students and I mean, decide to work for one of the companies that will have a presentation today. Presented on behalf of some industries that we invited. So, yes, it's impacting uh, uh, the, the, the career part of our students a lot. We're talking about clean energy, that's renewable energy. And renewable energy has less, less, less effect. One of the speakers explained about the importance of energy and encouraged students to continue to do more research and affirms that energy is an important element to the country. Well, as I mentioned during my presentation, we have a lot of aspects that we're looking at. So we have the environmental impact, we have the social and economic impact. So with regards to the environmental impact, we've done a lot of studies, and one major one is the, the ISHA. The ISHA report highlights some of the environmental and social impacts of the project. So through the Environment Protection Agency, we've been able to secure license this early this year, which gives us like approval of some of the identified risks for the project in terms of environmental and social. So they, they have given us approval for that. Also, we have a lot of resettlement that will be ongoing. One is where the project itself will be constructed, where the dam will be constructed. So that's the gap one, that's the resettlement of communities in these areas. And also the gap two, which is the inundation area. So once the dam is constructed, communities behind the dam will be flooded. So this community will be located to new areas. So ongoing plans have been done. As mentioned, the gap means resettlement action plan. So a lot of the planning has been done to ensure that these communities are resettled to new areas and also their livelihood is not affected. The project focuses on sustainable development goal six, ensuring availability and sustainable management for water and sanitation for all. Seven ensures access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Eleven make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Sheikh Mohammed Sile, AYV News, Freetown. Sierra Leone Investment and Exports Promotion Agency has brought Togo-based company Group Dajata to invest over a billion dollars in Sierra Leone housing sector. 
The move by sleeper is to create access to houses for all Sierra Leoneans. Mohamed Baka Kamara has the details. The facilitation, you know, uh, invitation, uh, promotion of investment and export in this country. Now, we have unveiled a very good news to you that uh, we, through our facilitation, through our mediation, through our, you know, our working relationship with this wonderful group, a very strict business group, they have unveiled with uh, maximum effort that they intend to build 5,000 uh, social housing in this country. That was Sheku Lex Monkoma, the Chief Executive Officer for Swellun Investment and Export Promotion Agency, speaking about the importance of the investors in the country and what it means in transforming the housing sector. Group Jetta is a Togo company that is specialized in building houses in several countries around the world. The group deemed it necessary to invest in Swellun and improving infrastructure development in the country as the main plan is to build 5,000 houses in the country to also complement the efforts of the government in improving infrastructure development in the country. You give me the land, we sign in the paper for the land, we go to steam in the place, we need uh, the time we collect the administration uh, paper, we need uh, 14 months. 14. 14. Uh, more. 14 months to give you the key of the 5,000 house. So every month, normally, with our, with our technology, we can find 5,000 houses. Every year. Huh? Every year. For that, we use 90% for the local material. We use 95% for the job, for the country. Because if you are investment and you come in one country, you never help the young man to, to work, to give job, you are not good partnership. This is the housing. We will bring water and the electricity. Is it packaging? Yes. But not the electricity, the local electricity, the local water. The 5,000 houses that will be constructed by Group Jota is worth over $1 billion according to Sheku Lex Monkoroma, a step in the right direction as it helps real unions to have access to houses in the country. For ARV News, I am Mohamed Baka Kamara, reporting in Freetown. Now, in a bid to support the free quality education, most especially for the needy children, the Kones Salima Tukonte Foundation has donated school and learning materials to children at United Methodist Church Primary School Urban Center. The gesture, according to the foundation, is to fulfill the desire of the late Salimatu Conte, whose dreams has always been to empower the next generation. Ali Alvin Kagwa reports. In fulfillment of the wish and aspiration of late Dickiness Salimatu Conte, who passed away in 2018, but has always dreamed of empowering the future generation. To actualize this desire, the husband and members of Dickiness Salimatu Conte Foundation has supported school children with school materials at UMC Urban Center Primary School, East End of Freetown. Pressing need of the school that the underprivileged children, our textbooks, um, exercise books, pen, pencils, etc. These are learning materials. So these are the things that we distribute to the children. And yes, we wish we partner with local and international organizations to make sure that we touch lives of other children in different schools. This is just the beginning, as the same day, charity begins as well. So we have just started at the school where the, the late woman attended and we'll make sure we extend to other schools of the same desire. It has always been a wish to care for children, especially the underprivileged. She even told her husband that her dream was to establish an orphanage to take care, to take care 
and support for the privileged children, but that dream was never fulfilled, as the late Sanwatu died in our early parties. On behalf of the beneficiaries, Elinor Kande, headmistress, United Methodist Church Primary School, thank the foundation for short a timely gesture and encourage them to continue fulfilling the desire of the late woman. I feel so moved for the wonderful presentation of learning materials to needy children in this school. It is indeed a payback from one of our past people who was in the United States by the name of Salema Sukonte, but unfortunately, sex snatched her away from us. The children are indeed happy and appreciate it very much. I hope and pray that this will not be the end but we continue to help more many children in the school. The foundation wishes to continue supporting school children in other parts of the country as that was the desire of Dikene Salima to Conte. Therefore, they are calling on other organizations to partner with them in supporting the free quality education. Ali Alvin Kagbo, AYV News, Freetown. Now still in education, ahead of the new technical university status, Min Timagai Technical University has commenced training of staff members in the ICT at Bluecrest College in Freetown. The move, according to the university administration, is to capacitate lecturers in ICT that will in turn guide them in conducting research. Abbas, George Sheriff Asmo. Making his statement at the commencement of the training in information communication technology for Milton Magai Technical University lecturers at the Blue Crest College in Freetown, the principal of the MMTU, Dr. Philip John Kanu, said the day is a fulfillment of government strategic policy and the MMTU strategic plan to meet the challenges of the new technical university. We want to make reports to the ministry that we are planning to bring up a system where all of our students must have laptops. When we are requested to close down colleges, we are able to administer our lecture rooms. Am I right? Lecture rooms. They develop their lecture, their lecture notes, but they will find it difficult to upload those notes because they are not computer literate. This ICT training that we, we requested, the director, it is for the purpose of the new trend, the Mint Magai Technical University that is coming first in effect, first of October. We are not waiting until when we are there, that is the time we start to train ourselves. The rector and Konski head of Blue Crest College, Dr. Shailesh Kumar, assured the lecturers who will be undergoing the training that they will excel in ICT ahead of their new technical university status. But at the end of the training, I assure you, guarantee you that you are going to be a different man and woman. The director of TVET at the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education, Dr. Victor Masakoy, in his remarks during the opening ceremony of the training, revealed that the ministry is currently working on developing an education sector plan for the country and ICT is going to be integral with respect to the plan. in the history, digital ICT is going to be integral in virtually everything with respect to that education plan. At the end of the 80 hours training, the MMTU lecturers said they would have acquired a lot of ICT knowledge. Albert George Sheriff, AYV News, Freetown. Apologies, that story was done by Albert George Sheriff. Now, this is Primetime News on AYV Television and Radio. Stay tuned for more stories after the break. for a place to get quality education but don't know how 
aware? Canadian College of Modern Technology situated at 1 Silicon Hill, Smile 91, opposite former Camp Charlie, is the right place for you. Canadian College of Modern Technology, an athlete of Dalai University, is a fully accredited college with a tertiary education commission, TEC, and a national commission for technical, vocation, other academic awards, NCTVA. We provide world-class tertiary education in computer science, business administration, mass communication, business information technology, Microsoft server administration, networking, database administration, building and construction, and other professional courses. Apart from its conducive environment, which makes it suitable for learning, Canadian College of Modern Technology is proud of its experienced local and international staffs. Come and experience the transformational learning environment, fully equipped with CCTV cameras, a world-class electronic library with the latest iMac computers for collaborative learning and research, and access to high-speed internet service throughout the campus. And guess what? Canadian College of Modern Technology is the first college in Sierra Leone to operate the first educational purpose-only television and radio station for its mass communication students. Come and be part of this historic experience. We have reserved a space for you. You want to know more? CCMC provides 24 hours electricity from a solar harvest power supply system with a backup generator. These highly secure campus also have a canteen, student hostels with clean pipe bond water. Canadian College offers many more amenities for our students to help make learning a good experience. For more information, contact us on these numbers 079-630-407 or 099-140-208. If you want to succeed, Canadian College will exceed your expectations. Canadian College of Modern Technology, a place where a career begins. Welcome back. I am Marina Terry, and this is AYV's Primetime News. Let's take more stories. Now, as part of their mandate in ensuring citizens continue to take COVID-19 vaccine, a team from NACOVAC has engaged worshippers on the importance of COVID vaccines. The ceremony was held at the Five Hives Center Mox in Waterloo, Freetown. Sheku Mohamed Sleh has more on the story. Of recent, many negative messages about COVID vaccine have spread out in the country like wildfire, and it has left quantum of citizens to have doubt about the vaccine. However, bringing proper message to the people about uh, the vaccine is an important mean, and one place such an information can be accepted is the worshipping house. Our Thomas Communication Pillar Lead for NACOVAC explained uh, the goodies about the vaccine. <laughs> Haji Abdul Rashid Kamara, regional chief imam for Waterloo, said the reason why people have not taken the vaccine at Waterloo is as a result that most of them are business people. The vaccine, but because they do the business there, so let us let the business say they get it too much. For go for the vaccine at the same time, they find it very difficult. So therefore, after we have been going to workshop through the uh, regional council with Nakova, they tell us a lot of encourage people as the leader. Second dose, me and Alaji Abdul Rashid Kamara, one of the chief man for the Waterloo District. I believe say me don't set a pace for me people where they be because I get millions of people where they be me where they choose me still ahead of the Islamic affairs in Waterloo. I am. So therefore, when we come up and the meeting, I can't talk to the executive. They all sit there and say, Imam, not the correct thing for issue because 
for them, we could left with Marquis Go and the center, we find it difficult. Well, today, Friday, I received the delegation of Mr. Simon Jamiro and the spokesperson, they will train colleagues, they will be medical team the ordinary. If you see that though, actually, you see, say, people have been really off for this vaccine, they know they're not being engaged as for good. Well, I believe, say, me, I like the Rashid Kamara, and you give me self a smile, because I don't set a pace that the whole country. He explains more. The vaccine rollout will continue across the country in ensuring that everyone receives their dose in order to save the lives of the people. Sheikh Mohammed Saleh, AYV News, Freetown. The All People's Congress Party has ended its three-day national delegates conference in Makeni. Now, according to members of the party, the national delegates conference is a new era for democracy in the party. Abbasisi reports. Today marks the end of the three days national delegates conference of the All People's Congress Party here in Makeni. The essence of these three days exercise is to adopt the 2021 constitution of the party. How important is this process to the general membership of the party? Here are views we gathered at the regional headquarters in Makeni. This uh, new constitution means a lot. You remember and uh, the constitution is about 26 years old now. From 1995 to now, it's been a two decades and a half. So now, uh, the, the new constitution, we get a good thing, the world will change, the world will amend. You know, the new constitution, it gets a lot of values that we carry. The values that we carry, we get for replicate them. We get for really capture the grassroots, whosoever, we really relevant. I don't give me the opportunity for allowing the young one a day in the decision making of the party, right? Like before we just the endorse, but this time round we are going to vote. Everybody is going to be voted for. He want for let the party grow. I mean, if we want to see do that all, for all all on the way they pull the party, that because the effects first also the party will be there. I just want one to be the gas this don't show say uh, the, the party APC gets disabled as us and we're ready for accommodate every disabled that say APC don't accept we they can adopt new constitution and all over the country, we don't open network. We get re, we, we can get our regional, Western region, APC, the same coordinator, the south, the north, the east. So outside we they get, and we they make sure that all over the country, the same the voice they be added in politics. Process very unique, very very marvelous. You know, damn too interesting. In fact, the interesting moments we are in at this kind day, of, all APC they looking for. At least we we'll all come together and try to forge the party ahead. The three days political engagement by the All People's Congress Party in McKinney was peaceful as security, especially the Sierra Leone police, did their best to control movement of cars and pedestrians. And overall, this Boston city experienced a boom in social and economic activities. Abbasi say, AYV News, McKinney. Focus 1000 with support from World Bank has ended a two-day safety protocol training for education stakeholders from 25 GPE selected schools in Kano District. This 11-month global partnership for education project will also focus on disadvantaged school-going children in the district. Dwight Nell has more on the story. The training attracted members of the school's management committees, board of governors, and members of the Combra networks in the 25 GPE beneficiary schools in both primary and junior secondary schools in Kono District. The project is being funded by the World Bank through the government of Sierra Leone to improve on safety protocols in schools. The senior district coordinator of Focus 1000, Patrick Fireman says, that the school safety protocols training was one of the components in the 11-month global partnership for education project. Five of the community members in each of the GPE beneficiary schools were trained on section criteria for the back-to-school material support for vulnerable school children. According to him, 
the community stakeholders after the training will go back to their respective communities and monitor schools. We really need everybody to be involved. That is why we are stressing on this inclusive education system. Because we want everybody to involve. You cannot leave school because you are pregnant by someone else. Either your peer group or an adult within the community. It is not good for you to leave school because of that. So we advise and talk to them all. And when we are looking at inclusion, especially help will be given to children. We've trained them also to identify vulnerable children in their different communities. We've done that today and we gave them forms of which the five-man committee that we've set up in each of those communities will sit together and look and see what to do in order to identify the most vulnerable people. The Deputy Director of Education in the Teacher Service Commission in Kono District, Max Falasengo, applauded Focus 1000 for complementing the efforts of government towards achieving quality education in the country. He says the training was important to them, especially when the GPE project focuses around monitoring of teacher attendances in schools. Well, uh, the GPE project is a support to education in the district. And uh, for us as a teaching service commission, it means a lot to us because uh, one of the key activities of this GPE project has to do with teacher monitoring, which is a major function of the CLO Teaching Service Commission. So therefore, if we have any other body or organization that is complementing the effort of the Teaching Service Commission in that direction, making sure that uh, they monitor teacher attendance, I think we see it as a plus for us. And so therefore, we are fully supporting the GPE project here. Some of the attendees of the training also appreciated Focus 1000 for the project. First and foremost, reaching the community, I'll make sure I meet the town chief and let him assemble all the community authorities and I will reveal all the message to them what I have learned here in this particular workshop. Then the second phase is to go and explain to the PPOs of the great junior secondary school about the essence and what I learned and I supposed to reveal everything to them for them to have it in mind and put it into practice. What has it is hoped that the community people take ownership around inclusive education of all children, irrespective of their status, which is one of the key objectives of the project, and to see that all the barriers preventing education drive are addressed. For AYB Primetime News, this is Dwight Neal reporting from Koidu City, Kono District, Eastern Sierra Leone. Now one unfinished community centre in Makeni has been given a facelift by San Pablo University based in Spain for the completion of the centre. Abu Bakr Kamara reports. The construction of the community centre was started by the former Honourable Member of Parliament. Speaking to journalists during the presentation, Mohamed Papa Bangura said the donation came after a felt needs assessment done by the Chief Executive Officer, San Pablo University in Spain, in collaboration with the University of McKinney through their neighborhood upgrading projects. One of their felt needs is this completion of this community center, which um, an honorable member of parliament had started, you know, some years ago. But then it got stuck at this point, and um, having done the assessments and the research, the people in the community said this is their one, this is one of their felt need, and they wanted this, I mean, uh, building completed, and uh, the small amount of money that they stand to benefit, the CU San Pablo University um, donated to them, led by Madame Clara, and with the calculation. And we realized that um, we'll buy some materials to push the work, even though this material will not complete this job. But however, it's very much important for us to start there. And that is why we've got a 100 bag of cement, 22 length of iron rod. And we asked them as community to see how best they could also come on board. And they provided that sand. We just helped them with a the vehicle to get the sand on site. And this is what we have done um, today. We're here, we have just delivered the materials that I've mentioned. 
receiving the items the youth leader and other community people say they have been suffering to access a center where they can discuss their community issues. They therefore thank the donors for the provision of these items. We get constraints, we certain through meetings in Kinde, then the courts there, with the strand for them then they so if mommy and papa with the effort of the community, the community identifies say this for be a felt need, then then self come. I will say a very good effort and I just pray that the community will hold this project with two hands and see that this time you know we'll just go and stop again. The donors urge the community people to take great care of the project. AYV Regional News, I am Abubakar Kamara from Makini. Now in sports, um, the head of media and communications of Western Area Football Association, David Turner, says the suspended Division I league will on Thursday, 30th of this month, at different venues in Freetown. Turner was speaking to AYV's Ransford McLean as it is in compliance to the new news policy set up by the Sierra Leone Football Association for all regional football bodies in the country. It was barely over three months the Western Area Football Association Division I leagues was put on hold because of increasing cases of the third wave of the coronavirus. According to the head of media and communications of Western Area Football Association, David Turner, the press release they put out came after their consultation with the Sierra Leone Football Association to ensure they organize structured Division I league. And as, as a region, we, we are part of um, the consultation to see how best um, we can work in tandem with what the SLFA wants. And that is to say they organize um, a structured national Division One tournament for all the five regions. So we cannot get the qualifications of those teams without organizing or completing our Division One league because obviously we've ended division two. Okay. The model would be the model would be there will be a new um, a national division one called Super Ten that will be organized by the SLFA. So that is to say our current division one, the teams that will not make it to the Super Ten will automatically relegate to division two. And division two, division three. A further speaks on the resumption of the female tournament, which is expected to kick off on the 30th September this year in Freetown. Firstly, they should register on the 26th. All clubs should come and register. Second, they, they bring their players to verify, we verify them. Then the league will start on the 30th. The same day, the division one is continuing. That's the same day they all they two will start. So it's a good news for. Leon. It's a good news for female footballers. It's a good news for all football administrators that own female clubs because um, it's, it's always a, a, a dream for the region that starts having female football competition. It has been a cry. Every year, these players want to play. We've been seeing the performance of our girls in inter international competition. It's not been much. The Western Area Football Association presser also reveals that they will have an important meeting with clubs representative of second division on the 1st October 2021. Rans for McLean, AYV Sports. It's just coming in that there is a fire outbreak in one of the slum communities in Freetown. AYV will ensure to keep our viewers and listeners updated once we have the factual details. Now into another sports story, a Jack striker Mohamed Dermi has scored his first goal for his new team against newly promoted side SS Kabor in the ongoing Dutch top tier. The match was a home debut for the Sierra Leone descent who came as a sub to help in his new club in 9-0 thriller. Ransford McLean has more. 
the 19-year-old Mohamed Daami, who was playing his professional football for FC Copenhagen in Denmark, has now scored his first goal for his new club, Ajax Football Club, demolishing SC Kamburu 9-0 in the Holland Top Tier League. Daami scored his goal on the 64th minute of play during an interview on Ajax Television, fixed on how excited he is to register a goal on his debut. Oh, it was amazing, so beautiful, and at home get my first goal, and uh, it was so good. I feel so so happy after I score and and I make assist also. So I'm happy for me and happy for the team. We we still go ho uh, go on and show we hungry for more goals and we continue as far as we can. So it was it was uh, we are we are very good. We had a little bit problem in the start, but after the first second goals we completely have control on the game and we just keep continue scoring goals and feel every time we have a chance we will score. SC Kambo has two players hailing from Sierra Leone, Alex Bangura and Issa Kalon. They suffered a humiliating defeat from Ajax in the match itself. SC Kamburu is currently ninth on the standing and have managed to win two matches in the Dutch RDVZ League. Runs for McLean AYB Sports Freetown. Well, that's the end of Primetime News tonight. For more stories, visit our website on www.ayvnews.com. If you have any comments on the news, please send an email to info at ayvnews.com. I am Marina Terry. Thanks for watching and listening. Stay safe and good night.